Two nights before we went out to evangelize at Comic-Con in Ocala, I had a supernatural dream. I walked into a crowd of people and I began to preach the gospel. As I preached, 50 other voices like those of the angels joined in unison to magnify the words that I was speaking because they were God's words and not my own. They spoke in perfect unison to me and spoke exactly what I spoke. It sounded like many waters. The words were Acts 17, 30 to 31. God commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Me and my friends were pumped to say the least. We had great expectations of God moving in our midst to save souls and to work a mighty work in the hearts and minds of the people of Comic Con. However, to my own shame, this was not what was in store for us. What's your name? I'm Steven. My name is Rain. <laughs> Rain? Nice to meet yeah. you. Who are you supposed to be? Are you, are you Sailor Moon? You know Gossai from the Future Diary. No. Okay, Gossai. Yeah. I gotta look into it. Yeah, go. it's really good. It's on uh, Hulu. Hulu, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, we're kind of asking some spiritual questions like, uh, are you afraid to, of dying? Like, do you know what happens after we die? Yeah, so I have a spirituality belief, uh -huh. and I believe energy cannot be created nor destroyed, so okay. after we die, we still live on. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I totally agree. So there's, like, there's something else after this, right? So, uh... You think you so? How do you do? You think we go different places depending on like how we live? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, have you ever heard like um, what do you think happens to bad people? Like people that do bad things, like you know. I don't know. I don't think that it really like. I don't think any person could answer that. Yeah. I think just every soul is on their own journey, learning different things and going through the trial of life. Yeah. And I was raised Christian. I'm 23 my whole oh, life, great. so um, I'm not Christian anymore. Um, okay. I was, went through a lot of religious trauma and things like that. I can so relate, yeah. I'm pretty uh, secure in my spirituality That's and just great. vibrations and the earth yeah, and yeah. just being kind and trying to live the best life you can. Right. So do you think we should, don't you think that people that do bad things, like don't you think it would be the right thing for them to be put in jail, for example, or some sort of, yeah. they gotta, something has to happen, like it just can't let things slide, right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, God has a jail cell, and do you know what he did for us to, to get us out of jail? You know what he did for our guilty sinners to get us out of jail? Are you familiar? Well, he yeah. came and he... He made his son die on the cross. Yeah. Yeah. And so you mentioned that you used to be, you used to be Christian. Can I ask if, uh, if it's not too personal, of course, but uh, like what, what you went through? Uh, that... it's, it's very personal. Okay. And I don't really feel like sharing it. Okay. I don't really feel like, I don't know if you're trying to convert people or what you're know. trying to do or just have conversation, but, yeah. um, I'm very secure in what I believe and I respect, you know, whatever you believe. And okay. I think that's great. And I think... Every person is different, and there's no one thing that works for everyone. So if you find okay. what works best for you, then that's great, and I yes. wish you all the best with it. Well, thanks so much. What, your name is Rain, you said? Yeah. It's nice to meet you, Rain. Thanks so much. So Jason, you can go ahead and share your testimony. My name is Jason. In um, 2019, I started having trouble swallowing food. Um, I went to the emergency room and thought it would be something simple, and it turned out that I ended up with stage 4 cancer. I had a tumor on my epiglottis, and uh, the outlook was not good. They told me I had a 30% chance to live. So that night, sitting in ICU, laying in the bed, staring at the ceiling, I knew I had to live the God-pleasing life. I accepted Christ when I was 13, but had not walked with God since then and realized that I could possibly be meeting God face to face and knowing I hadn't lived my life the way he wanted me to. So I, I kind of told myself, if I got out of this, I'm going to change things in my life. I'm going to change a lot of things I do. I'm going to get a good Bible. I'm going to find a church. I'm going to walk with God. I got through the surgery. I went through eight weeks of chemo and radiation. 
And then after four months of that, they did testing, and I still had cancer in the lymph nodes. So they had basically cut all down the side, took out lymph nodes, scraped the residual out, and did recovery. And four months later, I got the, the word that was cancer-free. And in that time, I had found a really good King James study Bible. Um, used to listen to sports podcasts. Went looking for podcasts out there, and found 30 minutes in the old, 30 minutes in the New Testament, 40 minutes in the Old Testament. Michael Heiser's Naked Bible podcast, and just things that, that helped me understand and, and enrich my learning and my walk with God. And as I started learning more and walking with God, I started feeling more conviction of sin in my life and just turned away from things, programs that I used to enjoy, horror movies I have no interest in watching anymore. I was a DJ in the clubs for 10 years, made really good money, and I walked away from the money and the DJ because I was not comfortable in the alcohol and the drug atmosphere. And the quality of my life has been so much better because the worries of the world don't affect me anymore. I know my destination is not here. I'm just temporary here walking with God. He just takes all that away. I used to, to go through life, kind of struggle with anxiety and depression and purpose. But after finding God and building that relationship and understanding Him, I understand myself better and have purpose and understanding and don't have the anxiety because I know there's better things on the horizon. For the remainder of our time there, I approached no one else nor did I proclaim God's word for everyone to hear like I saw in the dream because I was gripped by the sin of the fear of man. That night, I had a very tragic dream. I saw 50 baby chicks that I had purchased, except they were all dead and covered in their own feces and urine. They had died in their own filth. The interpretation is clear. This was a rebuke from the Lord. He was showing me the consequence of my sin. I was supposed to loudly proclaim the word of God as a herald in the midst of the people of Comic-Con, but I rebelled because of the fear of man. Fifty people were supposed to have supernatural encounters with heaven that day at the preaching of the word of God. They may well would have repented and sought God had I been obedient. But because of my disobedience and cowardice, those fifty people remain dead in their own filth. Dead in their sins, maybe to this day maybe unto eternal damnation. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth, and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at thine hand. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. 